All right, welcome to the number one Bengals podcast. We have a very special guest to take us through free agency today. I'm talking about the Zim, who obviously has a very successful, not number one, but very successful podcast of his own. Before he gets here, I want to talk to my man, John Sheeran, about all the stuff that went down. Very recently, we just signed Riley Reif. Reef. Right? Reef, Reef, as in like, the, like, like a coral reef. Yeah, John, honestly, who cares? He plays offensive line. That is, when I, when I saw that he plays offensive line, I was like, I want that guy. I don't know. I never, I didn't know he was for him. I thought, I, 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 you know, I didn't know. I thought his dad was Billy Ray Cyrus or something. I had no idea who he was, okay? But, you know, he plays tackle, right? Mostly what? Mostly mm-hmm. right tackle, mostly left tackle. I don't care. He plays tackle. So we're going to have him at right tackle to a start, I imagine, right? Yeah, he just said to media members that he was asked to play right tackle, so that's where he's going to be. Okay. And so if we get, you know, if we get Pinay Sewell, right? He He's still only 20 years old, so, you know, that will allow, allow him to ease into the position. I think it's a two-year deal, deal for Riley, right? Uh, we have no idea. I, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, maybe time. one or two. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because uh, Sewell can can take his time, right? They can move. look. We've had so many injuries and so many problems at offensive line. Honestly, if we have three starting caliber tackles, that's that's fine with me. Well, they need the depth, and also, but yeah. and I think I think Zim was going to touch on this as well. Like, you know, as soon as the the high price, the high quality names at offensive line kind of went off the board. You know, the Bengals were left to their own devices at players that are either risky because they're on the, the older side, uh, like over 30, or they're young and they don't they have a lot of question marks. So as soon as those top options at offensive line went off the board, no matter who the Bengals signed at offensive line, I don't think it really changes what they do in terms of how they address the draft. Like Riley Reef should not prohibit you from taking a, a right tackle with the fifth yeah. overall pick, but it also doesn't force you to take that position because before today, before Reef joined the team, they, 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 they had Bobby Hart and they released Bobby Hart uh, as a lockstep move with the signing of Riley Reef. But now that you have a solid starter at that position, you aren't forced to take one at the top of the draft, which is really all they can ask for. The more flexibility yeah. that they have at that spot, the better. John, you are the offensive line man. You know this is stuff way more than I do. But I learned one thing over my years of watching football, which is that there are two positions on the offensive line, guard, there's a left guard and a right guard. And mm-hmm. most teams have those. So so what is the Bengals plan? Because I don't see I don't see what they are doing. Look, John, they're going to do what? They're going to get a tackle in the first round if they right? After that, Maybe. what are they gonna are they gonna find a starters at guard in the draft? The Bengals? Come on. I think they're certainly looking for that. Um yeah, you know, but I mean the guard market is about as dry as the tackle market is going to be now that Reef is off the board. Um there's still a couple options that they can have as just like a again, like a spot starters type situation. I think they're still counting on Xavier Suofilo to fill in at left guard. You know, it's a more natural spot. They have him under contract for two years. And if you're in a position, you know, entering the draft where Xavier Suofilo is your worst offensive lineman, you can kind of make that work. But I do think they're going to add at least one guard somewhat early in the draft. And we'll probably see them add a veteran guard as well to kind of battle on that. But I think Reef is going to be your main headlining addition on offensive line. At at least before the draft. Yeah. But John, I mean, you know, there's also... There's also the, uh, the the question of Frank Pollock being back mm-hmm. and how much he can help develop guys. So I know one guy that I believe, you know, he believes will take a, another step forward is Billy Price. So, I mean, our, my question is this, John, because they're not going to, to put some rookies out there. So are they banking on the development from Frank Pollock that they haven't seen from Jim Turner the past few years to make those guys, you know, Michael Jordan, Xavier and, 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 and Billy Price and all those guys make them, you know, a starting caliber. I think we, we might be in a position where they're going to put out at least one guard to start in week one. But yeah, I think, I think they're banking on Suofilo improving under Pollock. I think, you know, Price was obviously, I think he played his best year under Frank Pollock as a rookie at center and he's going to get that opportunity 
when Trey Hopkins is still recovering from his torn ACL. And then again, there's a giant question mark right right now, right at right guard. Like Reef has the capability to play all over the offensive line, but if they're just putting him at right tackle, you still have a glaring hole at right guard. You don't have a natural player at that spot. I know Quinn Spain played there for I think four games last year, but he's always been a natural left guard. And he's still a free agent right now. We don't know if they're gonna retain him and add him back for competition at left guard. But right now they have like four left tackles, like three left guards, two centers, yeah. and now one solid right tackle in Riley Reef. So I mean it, it, maybe their starter right guard does come through the draft. I think this is still a solid class to find a, a quality guard on day two. It just depends on if the Bengals actually find him and draft him and not someone like a Michael Jordan caliber. Yeah. Okay, John. So look, so we got the tackle. You know, and he's 32 years old, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I remember significantly guys, younger than you, like, by the way. Well, let me just say, let me just say this, John. I do not expect a contract from the Bengals. In fact, look, I've been ranting a little bit, so I don't expect them to ever want to do business with me. That's fine. But I would say this, John, look, he's 32 years old, right? The man's 32 years old. Okay, Trent Williams, who's the guy in the, the 49ers, is that his name? Mm -hmm. Yeah, people are like, he's old. Why would you give him a contract? He's 32 too, John. I mean, I get the big difference in money, but if you're going to fix something, go out and fix Look, I'm not trying to complain about Riley. I'm just trying to say the logic. Let's look at the other guys we're interested, the guards, right? We had Zeitler, we had these other guys. We didn't bring them in. Why, John? Because of the guaranteed money, and you and I were chatting about this, but really, I think that this was the opportunity to fix the offensive line this offseason in the free agent. There's so many offensive linemen available, and we just didn't you know, put our money where our mouth is. Well, did, they, did we expect them to actually put the money where their mouth is, or did we expect them to find a deal that they're comfortable making? Like, I think there's a difference between yeah. expecting them to change their entire financial principles and also just... In, and also just expect them to address the offensive line in ways that they see fit. I yeah. think at the end of the day, if you leave free agency with Riley Reef and maybe some type of a veteran guard, that's not the worst case scenario. But I think in their mind, if they do that and also draft a couple offensive linemen before the third round, that's still in their mind, I think, an aggressive fix of the offensive line. There are contracts say, like yeah. Kevin Tyler and Matt Filer that I think they should have been more aggressive at. Unfortunately, they chose deals with more guaranteed money at the back yeah. end of those deals. And unfortunately, they just weren't going to compete with that. And we can talk about yeah. why they're cheap and frugal like that. Yeah. But it's, again, when they take those deals and we, yeah. we can recognize why the Bengals didn't do that. I mean, John, uh, look, we have our special guest is here now. Zim Hude mm -hmm. is available, but, you know, I'm going to let him, you know, he's finishing his snacks. I'm going to let him finish those and then we're going to bring him right in. Yeah. But I just want to real quick, John, I want to say you talk about the, the guaranteed money and all that. I totally get it because you, you see this tie. I got this from is actually secondhand a store for children. I got this tie two dollars mm -hmm. and, and 40 cents. It was two dollars, 50 cents. I talked about two dollars, 40 cents. But John, I, I shop at Costco for a reason. Because I always have that, that assurance that I can take something back if I want to, right? Because, because I, don't, I don't want to worry about the spending money. And mm -hmm. I know that is how the Bengals operate. And I will say it has backfired. I've ended up with these big boxes of, of kettle corn that I never eat. They go stale because I'm trying to get a good deal. And it's the same thing with the Bengals. They give big money, but not a lot of guarantee to lesser players. And this is what they end up with. But look, Zim the Bengals philosophy and who they should have brought in and he has a special list he's going to tell us about so let's bring in the Zim yeah <gasps> there we go there is my man you cold yeah. man it's so cold Zim how are you man I'm doing pretty good how are you guys I, I I was just listening backstage to a lot of your takes daddy -o. Yeah. And I'm ready to I'm ready to go ahead and just absolutely destroy all of that. Please. That is why we brought you on. Yeah. <laughs> so like, now, nah, you know, like there, there's something to be said for the effort or the people that they did bring in and or the people that they didn't. I believe in. I believe in their plan. And I think like the value and some of the people like that, I think. You could mention like a Zeitler or a Tooney or whatever. I just I just don't see the value in it. And I just think from a team that has like a history of injuries and different things not going their way, 
if one of those guys were to get injured and you're lesser, you're picking up less lesser free agents in this all season, you're you're back in square one. I like the approach of stockpiling up people. So and, and, and then the, another thing that you're talking, you're almost talking from a position like you feel like they're finished. You don't think they they don't have another act like I just don't feel that way. I feel like I feel like there's still something left to be done. Uh, if you were asking me to grade the all season right now, I'd probably say, yeah, maybe a C plus B minus at the highest. But I like some things they did. I don't like yeah. everything they did. But the guys that you could talk about, they missed with the exception of like a filer and Gabe Jackson. Those are two. Gabe Jackson is a guy that I just thought 100 percent. But they're unwilling to give up get, uh, draft capital. And and it showed they're not, they're not even willing to give up a fifth round pick for that. And I think with Pollock, they just have a lot more. They have a lot more trust in Pollock, and they have a lot more trust in the line than I I think the average fan is. And I and I know from my sources, Joe Burrow has a lot more trust in the offensive line than the typical fan uh, that I see. I guess on the internet. Yeah. Okay. Fair. But look, look, we're talking about the bottom line is guaranteed money. You're talking about value and injuries, and you're saying, look, the Bengals, they don't know how to take care of their players. They don't have a good training staff, so I don't trust them to bring in a talented player and have him produce. I get that. But look at look at the Lawson deal and the Trey Hendrickson deal. I will be honest with you. I've never heard of Trey Hendrickson before. I, 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 I saw that he plays defensive tackle. <laughs> I'm very happy. I know we needed a defensive tackle, but if they said they signed him to a minimum deal, I would be like, oh, okay. We got the guy from the Saints. I imagine he's good. They gave him $15 million a year, the same they gave Lawson. The difference is the guaranteed money. Now, John's going to be like, oh, that's not real money, the, the Trey Hendrickson deal. Okay, fine. He gets $20 million in his first year, man. That's as much total as I got. The guaranteed this guy. I'm saying this. The difference is the way they structure their contracts. They turn away people, right? And they could get better players. You think you think Trey is better than Lawson? Is it even close? I mean, in terms of you look no one, at Lawson. No one, dude, no one said that. No, not a damn yeah. person said that. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not saying that. Yeah. So you see, you see, but you see the problem with the way they approach free agency. We end up paying per year the same amount for lesser players. You all think right, Trey? Right. Went, yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's Carl Lawson to you, and I'm not even going to focus on just six sacks, right? But Carl Lawson, with the exception of this past year, his first starting year starting, right? Just like Trey Hendrickson's first year starting. I agree. Ch Carl Lawson, to me, is just a freak of nature, a force to be reckoned with, a team, a guy that teams have to make sure that they uh, double team. You have to do a lot of different things for Carl Lawson. Um, but Carl Lawson ain't Lawrence Taylor. So... You can't really, you can't make me feel a certain type of way, like, oh my God, like I'm, I'm going to sit there and harp on the fact that I didn't bring back Carl Lawson no, but look, when he, when he didn't do, he didn't do. It, it's not like I lost Miles Garrett, you know what okay. I mean? Like, Can so I how do you, you so how do you replace he, it? Hendrickson is he and, a, and another guy is what I would replaceable? do. Who's more replaceable, Trey Wayne's or Carl Lawson? Trey Wayne's, but they were already on the okay. hook for the guarantee. No, I know, you know, but okay, what I'm saying is this, man. Yeah, he's not. If if Lawrence Taylor played today, he get paid like a quarterback almost. I'm not saying he's that, but there's no other pass rusher out there in free agency, and there's no one they're gonna find Aldis in the Smith. draft. There's no one they're gonna find in the draft who's gonna come in and produce like him right away. The problem with Lawson was he needed a Trey Hendrickson and another defensive tackle who actually wants to play for the team next to him, and then you'd see 15 sacks. That's okay, the okay. deal. All yeah. right, I, I think I think we're getting lost. Like we all agreed that yeah. that they downgraded, like right, as of right now, that they downgraded on the defensive line. But you can't expect them to pay that money for Carl Lawson. Like they don't guarantee base salaries. I'm just, I'm just I'm I'm saying like I, I I understand where you're coming from, but the argument that you have to make is one that you're never going to win. You're never going to see progress from. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Right. Okay, right. So my, my, I, I get life is about expectations sometimes too. I expect that they'll do whatever to stay afloat for the most part, just so that they're not a bottom of the barrel team. And and I guess that's a low expectation. But I don't exactly. ever, ex I don't exactly. ever expect them to throw out and go get the highest level of free agents uh, available and give out the most yeah. guaranteed money. And 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 I don't want them to either. That's yeah. another thing. I don't want to be the highest paid anything. That's that's just my philosophy. Okay. I get it. I get it. Okay. So look, they, 
they spent a lot on Trey Hendrickson. That was the, the only puzzling move. That was the Trey Waynes move of this offseason for me. And I'm just wondering, guys. Now, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I, welcome to the team, Trey, by the way, if you're watching. I'm sure he's watching. So don't, 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 look, I always get the wrong idea. I'm really happy you're on the team, man. I'm happy on the team. Just like I'm happy Trey Waynes is on the team. Okay? I'm just going to call it the Trey Waynes signing of the year. The Trey Hendrickson. Where I don't get it. I don't get the money. But hey. They weren't going to spend it anyways, so enjoy that money, man. Enjoy. It. I, I will so say look, this: I, yeah. I think I think there's a difference here. I think they signed Trey Waynes because they knew they had to replace loss. We knew they were going to be aggressive to at least replace those snaps. Wh whether they replace the actual production remains to be seen. They're hoping that he is sent. I think with Waynes, they kind of knew ahead of time that they weren't going to bring back uh, William Jackson, and they just made an offer that no one else was else going to compete for, and it was kind of a misevaluation with Wayne. So I think those those two are a little bit different, but I see where you're coming from in that sense. So let's explain that. Let's explain that. What did William Jackson get? What was his contract? He got it was three years, forty and a half million with like okay. fifteen guaranteed. Right. Right. And then he get twenty six guaranteed. Um, I, I think it, it was like, I, I, yeah, I think along with the signing bonus and the two base salaries is twenty six total guaranteed. Okay. And, so, and they put that in a perspective. AJ Green's biggest contract, his most guaranteed money was twenty five million. Right. Yeah. But that was that was like five years ago. But okay, mm -hmm. fine, fine. Look, look. Okay, so we downgrade from William Jackson to we got Trey Waynes and we got Mike Hilton and we got uh, Chidobe Awuzie. Awuzie. Yeah. He said Awuzie is yeah. fine with him, even though that's right. not even the correct pronunciation. But he said no, no one's going to pronounce it like he said on the press conference. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, so here's the thing. Again, I mean. The Bengals are into keeping their own. They actually had a talented corner. Let them walk again for the game. Look, okay, John's sick of this conversation. Let's move on. Let's let's pretend that we agree with the Bengals' moves. Okay, it's so not about now, agreeing. It's, it's, now, it's, it's saying what it is. I, I was I was just gonna say like you know I'm one. I'm at the end of the day I'm a fan. You know you know so my perspective is a little different too. I'm gonna be really hard on you know guys, but once you sign up for these for black and orange to me, I'm a cheer for you. You know, like is Hendrickson a guy that I that I uh, that I targeted first on my on my offseason plan? Like, no, I'll be the first one to tell you that. But I believe if you pair him up with the right person, and obviously Lou Anaruma was saying that that's his guy, it fits his scheme. I'm not a defensive coordinator, and that's the guy that he wants. You know, I have to believe in it. Now, if he gets out on the field of play and he's absolute garbage, I'll be the first one to tell you that too. Yeah, yeah, I I get that. Yeah. But uh, how much do we trust Luan Rumo's judgment? None. Right? <laughs> I mean, it's all up to him. Like they, they've, given okay. him the, they've given him the biggest contracts in team history. Like it's it's all out there for him to to either fail or succeed. Yeah, yeah. He's okay, the first one to go. He's the first. I mean, if, if this thing doesn't go the way that they planned it, to me, Lou is the first fall guy that yeah. you could probably point to. They hey, gave they gave him a lot. Zim. Don't you think it's kind of funny, man, that Marvin Lewis took lesser rosters further than they should have gone, and he got nothing in free agency? And then we got the Zach Taylor, who, if he wins four, he, what, he went, was it two games, three games? I forgot last year. And they're like, oh, that's progress, because the previous year he won like one game. And then we got Luan Rumo, who, oh, he wasn't ranked 32nd in defense this year. Wow, let's throw him a party and get them all these free agency ones. <laughs> what does what is going on, man? Like, like what? Like Marvin Lewis never got this opportunity. Let, let me tell you, it's just a timing thing for me. Right now, you're saying Emily Parker, you're saying um, Elizabeth Blackburn, all these people. Now, the changing of the guards has happened. When Marvin was there, the philosophies were still in place. The contracts are going to be honored all the way through. Um, uh, Mike Brown still had a lot more cojones and had a lot more say so in the in the organization. And as as Marvin Lewis has transitioned his way out the door, you know, so has the front office transitioned into this new period. You, I think, when the Joe Mixon picture came out and he signed, it was it was a big statement to me. Like when that picture yeah. came out and the, and the way that it came out and the way that they're presenting everything now. Had this been the same staff? And and I hate to look backwards. That's one thing I, I don't do. Yeah. But had this same uh, ownership group, the front office been the same currently right now with Marvin Lewis and Marvin Lewis was able to get his guys, 
I, I just think, yeah, that's a big difference. But it was the right move to move on from Marvin Lewis. And I won't second guess that because some no, of his, no. some of his philosophies saying, yeah. I just don't – I didn't agree with some of the old school yeah. stuff that – uh, rookie transitions and different things like that as the league is evolving. You okay. might have had Mar to, – to say that, though, let, check this out. You could have had Marvin Lewis as the head coach and Joe Burrow sit on the bench for a couple games or half I a year. Know. You see what I'm saying? No. I'm, I, I'm, I'm no, telling you, the, the, way, the okay. way that he operates is totally different from a coaching standpoint. Yeah. He might have been yeah. like, let's transition them in differently. Hold you on. never let know. Me just say this. Let me just say this. Okay. I think Marvin Lewis, okay, he thinks like an older school coach, but that's why he needed a GM. I don't know if you've heard of a New York Bengals fan like me, but I've, I've done some research. And there are other teams that have this thing called the general manager. He just manages the general stuff. He, he like makes the roster and the coach doesn't really have the final say. The general master ha ma uh, manager has a vision and he comes and says, this is what it's going to be like. The Bengals, okay, did not have one of those with Marvin Lewis. So I think when they drafted Carson Palmer, okay, yeah, he sat on the bench for a year, but that was only because back in that day, I don't remember, back in those days, quarterbacks didn't just jump into the league. That is a relatively recent phenomenon, okay? And, and Carson Palmer was not as polished as Joe Burrow. His first year, he threw a lot of interceptions. I mean, he generally threw a lot of interceptions, let's be honest. That was kind of his thing. But, but no, but Carson Palmer was not as ready as Joe Burrow. So, I, you know, I think that Marvin Lewis, if he if he had a GM who said, here's going to be your offensive coordinator, this is going to be, you know, and, and this is going to, the roster is going to look like this, and he just got to go there and coach and manage people, you know, I think it would be different. But, but look, that's in the past. I'm just trying to say, these guys are getting way more opportunities, way more opportunities than any Bengals coach we've ever seen. Dude, dude they love yeah. Zach. Like, like we knew that yeah. coming. Like, they are infatuated. Like, I think at least Jesse of all Bengals said, like, like he better ask for everything that he wants right now because they're still all in on him. And I think that's the difference. Like, when they hired him, they, like, Zach came in with a plan and said, we need to add talent in different ways that you guys haven't really done before. And you're kind of seeing, like Zim said, the transition from more of a Mike Brown autocracy to a Katie Brown and Troy Black. Kitty Blackburn, Troy Blackburn type of of, of oligarchy with, with what they're doing now. So like you're seeing similar contracts that they that they have previously given to their own players in the past, but now you're yeah. seeing them given to guys like Hendrickson, to guys like Reader, and all that stuff. So no, nothing really has changed in terms of the contracts yeah. that they give. It's just the players that they're targeting well, outside. Well, of the team. right. Well, well, it's because they're not as good at drafting recently. So they used That's to be able true. to give a Geno Atkins and Carlos Dunlap that money, but now they're like, who are we going to give it to on our team? You know what I mean? Who are the guys they recently drafted to replace those guys? You know, it would have been like, uh, you know, I mean, like, what offensive line are they going to pay from that they drafted? You know what I mean? The only guy who is probably going to get a second contract is Jonah Williams. But, okay, guys, you are being way too negative. I'm sorry. I just want to move on from the negative. <laughs> okay? No, please. Just, just focus, guys. Just focus. <laughs> right. Look, uh, first of all, first of all, Zim, I don't know if you wear shoes or if you like shoes or if you buy nice shoes. Sometimes. But... Yeah. But so, I mean, this is the this is the thing. The last negative thing I, I will say is that, you know, I, I, I tweeted this, you know, when if someone is cheap, it doesn't mean that they don't buy shoes at all. Like, right. Like they might buy thirty dollar shoes because they don't want to spend the money it takes to get good shoes. Right. Um, but in the end, that thirty dollar shoe will will fall apart in a couple of months and you'll have to buy new shoes. If you get like seventy dollar shoes, hundred dollar shoes that last you for five years. Name the right. names. Who who are the cheap yeah. shoes? Name uh, the that's names. Not, well, that wasn't the purpose of that. We need names. We need names. No. It's some dirty <laughs> shoes that they just bought. Who are these guys? Look, Zim, you're getting off track. The point is, <laughs> I want to take a brief moment to talk about our sponsor, eBay. Because whether the rare dead stock or the latest release, you find the exact shoe that you're looking for, Zim. As the original sneaker ma marketplace, eBay is a place to go to cop. Now, I think that means to... I, I'm not sure exactly, but I think it needs to discriminate between your different pairs of shoes. Four times of this. Yeah. It's just to acquire. Just to acquire. Okay. It doesn't do it. Okay, so you cop. Yeah. Okay, so that's not what cop. Okay. Oh, it's, cop, not, it's, it's not to arrest a pair of shoes? Profile cop. the shoe. I mean, to cop the, the pair that you've been eyeing. Okay, Zim. And with eBay's authenticity guarantee, your sneakers are meticulously inspected by independent professional a sneaky author dictators. A team of experienced, <laughs> yeah, a sneaky other dictators, they verify the box, the logo is teaching dozens of other inspection points, 
and they protect sellers with a re verified return process. So go to ebay.com slash sneakers today. eBay, the world's best destination for discovering great value and unique selection, Jim. So if you look, if you want to sell your sneakers and they're worth more than $100, so obviously yes. not talking to the Brown family, okay. uh, they make it free to juggle your collection. But to flip your collection, that's that. That's the that's the ad. Right? I I, I'm, I love eBay, and I encourage yeah. anyone that's on here right now. Absolutely, don't ever forget about eBay. eBay got me through high school. There you go. There you go. Thank you, Zim. We're gonna have to All right. give you some commission yeah, for that. Yeah. So, Zim, look, look. Let me ask you something. Okay, the Kenny Galladay thing. Okay, is that is still alive? It's still alive. Um, I guess it's less hope in uh, you know, in the Galladay thing. But I, I have a whole attitude that I think is a lot different than maybe the average Bengal fan. It's like, I want Galladay to be here, but I just feel like everything is is happening. To, uh, you know, like, I'm not going to say everything is happening the way I thought it would, but a lot of different things behind the scenes, a lot of different things with the roster, I, I feel very confident with that. If Galladay didn't come here, I mean, we're at a great spot to go get our own 21-year-old version of Galladay. So a lot of fans that are like, man, give me Galladay. And I, and I love it. You know, like I want people to be excited about it. But at the same time, I probably call Kenny right now and tell him, hey, bro, what you going to do? You know, because we are out here smoking. We about to get this thing. We about to get the train choo-chooing. We're getting on the tracks, uh, Galladay. Are you getting on it? Because we just gave you a whole hashtag right now. We don't, we absolutely can give you the bag for one year. Ravens, Giants, they don't got this type of money right here. We got well, the space me, for it. Yeah. What you want to do? Let, and if he ain't me, with it, it doesn't matter. I got I got Chase at five. Yeah. Let me ask John something. First of all, I have two questions, John. First of all, when I see Galladay, doesn't, he doesn't get that separation. That he's not the... He's not the uh, a speedster that they were talking about. He's not the Will Fuller who adds a new dimension to the to the offense. Okay, no, I'm I'm saying he's a great receiver. I get it, but that that's all you need to say. That no, stop. but hold on, hold on. He's a great on. receiver. He's a great receiver, but he's kind of like a T Higgins in a way. Okay, in terms of what he brings. It's from high him. praise for T Higgins. Kenny no, Gall is one of the best receivers in the game. Okay, I get right. it. Okay, so so that was actually my second question. Why would he take a one year deal? Why is he getting? I know that next year the cap is going to explode and all that, but I mean, you like, just answered your own question. Look, no, but I, okay, there's other guys that are getting big. Okay, what about that tackle, uh, Trent Williams? Why did he get a huge deal? Why, if the top play, he's a top player. So if Kenny Galladay was going to get a giant deal like Trent Williams, he would have gotten yeah. it by now. So why right. not? I'm saying if he. Do you see what I'm saying, John? Like, if he's a top receiver, which I, John, I think he John, give it to him. Good. Give it to him, John. Dude, Galladay's interested in a one-year deal because whatever he gets from the Giants, it won't be as much as he gets next year if he if he plays well. Like, the Giants are trying to lock him in to a multi-year deal because they don't have really space to, to give him a one-year deal. And like Zim said, the Ravens are kind of in the same boat. So he wants yeah. to take one year, play with a, play with, in a system and a quarterback that will give him production if he's healthy. And then next year when the cap goes up, he can maximize his future earnings. That's the whole point. Okay. That's why I don't like so the franchise tag in the first place. You just said the Giants, and then you said a team that will maximize his his ability. Which future one? Future earnings. How would playing for the Giants help his his numbers? Look, he just he played would, with he, Matthew Stafford. Yeah. Uh, all right, all right. If he wants to play with the Giants, that's, that's entirely his prerogative. There's clearly mutual interest on both sides. That's why that meeting is happening happening in the first place. If he takes something with the Giants, that's for the stability right now. I'm sure they're going to give him a large signing bonus to prorate that cap hit because they don't have a lot of space right now. Or he can take a one-year deal with an objectively better quarterback and objectively better offensive scheme to give him that production. Yeah. It's entirely up to I him. I'm a big Joe Burrow fan. But if I'm taking a short deal and I want to maybe – be on the national stage and get attention. I'm going to the Ravens, right? Let's be honest. Look, Again, but, it's up to him. Lamar Jackson, Joe yeah. Burrow. That's completely up to him. It's yeah. it's not just Lamar J Jackson and Burrow too. It's a matter of they can't give him the back. Like for most of the show, you've talked about how the Bengals couldn't. They're in a rare, they're in a rare spot. The Bengals do have the cap space that these other teams don't. They have the they have the ability to front load this one year, you know, like make this one year deal that none of these other teams can and probably which is uniquely set up for them, offer them something that those other teams that can't offer Galladay. Now, how big of the guaranteed money difference it is between that and the Ravens? I'm not sure. The Ravens just called. So to me, it's a little bit bigger than the Ravens and just the bank. Uh, I mean, just Joe Burrow versus Lamar. The other thing that Galladay's got to think about is this. 
If yeah. and I talked about some this earlier with somebody else too. Say we say they get Galladay on a one year deal. There is a possibility the Bengals could go because, like I know behind the scenes. Joe Burrow does want Jamar Chase, and I'm not talking about just what leaked in January, like definitively wants Jamar Chase, right? Mm -hmm. So if that happens, then Galladay probably has to think, well, I'm probably not going to get the type of targets that I would get, you know, in New York or anything like that. But he also has to weigh in the fact that Daniel Jones is your quarterback. Lamar yeah. Jackson, as much as he's a bigger threat, and I love – and I'm a big Lamar Jackson fan, even though I hate yeah. the Ravens, right? Joe Burrow is going to make my numbers and he's going to make me pop off the screen okay. a lot, oh, yeah. every every, every yeah. Sunday, no matter how pessimistic you could be about the Bengals yeah. or whatever. And John said it, the scheme and everything fits him. You talked about Galladay. Joe Burrow made a living throwing back shoulder. All, like, go look at the, yeah. highlight, the highlights on Galladay. Like, that's that's a fit as well, too, you know? So, yeah. Let me, okay, hold on, hold on. You just said if they draft Jamar Chase, yeah, the targets... Am I am I missing something, guys? T. Higgins was a rookie, and he had what, like eight hundred yards? Right. He was. He looked like he and he was. What, what had a thousand? Is a he's a he's a Pro Bowl receiver. Okay, so you have two receivers who are getting over a hundred targets, right? Keyword: and, two receivers. Look at the depth chart. What, whatever you're about to, I know what you're about to say. Look at the depth chart. Well, you so, don't know what I'm going to say because I'm going to say this. Right. Then you have no offensive line, okay? You have basically no offensive line, okay? And you have a quarterback who's coming off a knee injury who's going to be exposed behind, you know, he could get hit again, God forbid, behind that offensive line. And, you know, he doesn't have the time to make the deep throws. Line, let's just say. I mean, maybe all those things change this year. But if I'm looking at it from the outside, and then I look at the Ravens who have a power running attack they have a, you know they have mvp they always invest in the line oh they got this guy named kevin zeitler if you guys have heard of him on a cheap deal only 22 million dollars or something for three years of service because they gave him more guaranteed money they didn't get the costco return guarantee you know and you know and you look at that i don't know i i don't know i mean joe burrow is the better quarterback i'm going to say it i know lamar jackson he might be the better nfl player you know, because of what he brings overall. But Joe, Bur Joe Burrow is a better quarterback. He throws the ball better. I mean, that's my opinion. And, you know, I think Joe Burrow is, is more independent in the sense that he can carry a team in the offense without a lot going on around him. So I believe in Joe Burrow more than Lamar Jackson. But if I'm just looking from the outside, I mean, the Ravens seem to have a lot more going for them. It's fair. I mean, that point in itself, it's fair. I think... I want to go back to just the overall fit, though, because, you know, if, if you're comparing what Galladay does well with what the receivers that they already have, like, yeah, like they're similar in, in that sense. But I, I think still like Galladay is, on another, is at another level of talent compared to where Higgins is right now. He's a completely different receiver compared to Boyd. Like he does well with what the Bengals do well. And I think that's overall, I think like why the Bengals should and, and, and are interested in it as well. I think with the Ravens, you know, I, I think you both made some good points it, it, again. It, it, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to just speak for Kenny and what he wants. And clearly he wants something, but you know, I, I think either would be, I think either would be fine, but also like you, I don't think you can just look at, at Galladay and say, Oh, he, he's similar to what they already have. Like he's objectively good and he can bring them something that, and, he, and he can bring them something yeah. new. And if they sign Galladay and along with reef, I still think your options are open with the draft. I don't think you're locking into any yeah. player. And I think that's important. Yeah. I mean, look, I, I say, I spend that the money. I don't care. And honestly, I love chase. And I love the, the idea of opening up the offense with another explosive receiver. But I'm more of a fan of drafting offensive linemen in the first round, you know. So, guys, okay, some breaking news. Do, do, We're break do, 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 yeah. do you care who the lineman is? I'm sorry, go break the news. Well, I do care. I, I tell, I told John this, you know. I don't trust the Bengals to draft an offensive lineman who isn't a obviously great player. You know what I mean? Like, I don't. I, I he's don't not. He's not Quentin Nelson. Neither one of those guys yeah. are Quentin Nelson. Yeah. So, so, but it's still. I mean, look. You look at the raw talent and you look at Frank Pollock's coaching ability, I think I can easily see Seville, uh, you know, developing maybe a year or two down the road, but I see that happening. Guys, we're going to break it. I don't know if, if you know, this is breaking exclusive news right here. Nobody else, I don't think, because it was just broken on our show by Andrew Sealer. Gino Atkins has been released, guys. Yep. Yeah, that's very sad. Very sad. 
hate to see him go out like that. But yeah, I do hope he finds another team that you know that loves him and 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 you know treats him the way he deserves. But yeah, so so we lost him and we lost Bengals legend Ryan Finley. I just learned who defeated the Steelers. <laughs> Why? Why? I don't know. I don't know the laughing. He he did what? What? Because <laughs> he's a bum. You know, I went okay. to NC State, right? Okay, but did not know that. You knew that? Okay. Well, I did not. Maybe. Oh yeah. Maybe what? I, I do not like. I'm not a Ryan Finley fan, but I understand well, your your point, Daddy O. Like he is a yeah. legend. I feel no, like I he mean, gave us a I would say this. Maybe it takes a bum to beat the scum. Because he was the only guy who could beat the Steelers, right? And they're a scum. That's that was the reference to the Steelers. But okay, yeah. And Bobby Hart, obviously, he played offensive line for us. That I will leave it at that. He he played, and uh, he didn't allow a sack on every pass possession. So so that that is something he had going for him. All right, you guys seem to be on your phones. You're catching up on, on the news, even though we some, have some of us are working, today. man. Some of us are working. Right. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I, then, I, I will yeah. say this, Daddy. All right. This is the one thing I wanted to talk to you about the draft is, and I encourage everyone that's never seen this face or whatever. I've put a lot, a lot of brain power into my into my concept and what I believe in would make this thing pop. You could sit there forever in a day trying to figure out how to be the next Cleveland Browns, block, 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 block. Cool. Have the most elite line or whatever. You're going to go out the first round of playoffs. The only difference between us winning a playoff game and going on a Super Bowl run in those years past when we went to five appearances is the, is Joe Burrow. Now that we have Joe Burrow, the worst thing you could do is not surround him with weapons and waste his best years. If you Andrew Luck the situation, I don't care if you fix the line or not or whatever, immediately you can't ever shortchange him if you have the opportunity to go get the best players available and the best talent available. That's the reason why I asked you the question, do you care who the lineman is? Because if Rashawn Slater is on the board at number five and Panay is gone, that is a mistake. And you're going to be sitting there stagnant, looking like, oh, yeah, yeah, we could block, but you don't have the playmakers to get you to where you want to go. And the only thing I'm thinking about is a championship. I know that sounds a lot crazy to a lot of people that are living in this pessimistic world that I, I've never entered into. I believe that Joe Burrow is surrounded with the weapons that he chooses will absolutely take you to the promised land. If you shortchange them in any way in that, in, in, in that route to get there, then you're going to fall flat on your face and you're going to be one of the people looking at how like Deshaun Jackson is. I mean, I said Deshaun Jackson. Deshaun Watson is just trying to get his way out of town. Most fans are feeling like, OK, I just saw this guy tear his ACL. Joe Burrow wakes up in the morning. He's not thinking I just tore my ACL. No. He's waking up thinking I want smoke and I'm ready to go put firepower out there on the field and I'm ready yeah. to score some points. And that's the that's same the way I feel. That's what I feel before I do this show. I don't know why I we're talking. John. I think I think yeah. we should have just ended the show right there. <laughs> yeah. No, that was good. That was good, Zim. But uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know why he would feel the Bengals would shortchange him. It just seems so out of character. If you for, pass for, up uh, on Jamar yeah. Chase for a guy for a solid lineman, that yeah. you're not doing a service to him just because yeah. you're feeding a narrative that's currently going on where we have to have the most elite line. Like, no, he needs an above average line. He'll make sure that he makes time in the pocket and he'll do everything yeah. he has to do. There was a four to five week stretch this past year where not one Bengals fan probably brought up Bobby Hart. There's not one Bengals fan that brought up the offensive line when we were humming. But then yeah. all of a sudden he tears the ACL and now it's the worst line the world has ever seen. They are not good. They need to upgrade. But to lose sight of best player available or talent or generational talent, such as your Jamar Chase or Pitts or anybody that might be staring, looking at you right in the face, you're just going to Billy Price your life. Wow. And that you mean that in a good way? You mean that? I mean that in the very good. worst possible way possible. Okay. Well, not, if Billy, Frank Ragnall is on the Billy, board this year, I want Frank Ragnall. If Billy Price is sitting there in my face, I don't want Billy, Billy Price. Billy, you please, please, Billy, that he's joking. And I love Billy. Watches Billy. Our show. He was on our show. He loves our show. He watches our show. We love Billy. Look, Billy's going to take a big step forward. The whole offensive line, let's be honest. We don't need anybody. We don't need to draft anybody or take any free agents. We got the guys we need right in this building. Everybody's going to see. <coughs> Zim, last thing, real quick. You had the list. And it was a, supposedly is a, it's, it's different. It's a very famous list, but it's not as sad or, or, or you know, Tragic as some other famous lists. What what was your list and where are you with that? 
my list, I'm, I'm, I'm hitting. I'm still hitting. So uh, the, the difference, I guess, is if you look at my list, I'm looking at players that I feel like are an upgrade to the line, such as Gabe Jackson of the Worlds, who they absolutely should have been a part of. I think uh, Fowler was never on my list because the people that I talked to behind the scenes just didn't think that was a fit. So I compiled this list based off of people that I know close to the organization, players and different things like that. I've been hitting on most of the people that I've said that the Bengals should get. Um, yeah. uh, one of the guys, there's a couple guys that I'm really disappointed they didn't get, but two of my guys, such as uh, uh, Wofford and Trey Turner. Trey Turner is a guy to really keep your eyes on still. But yeah. those yeah. are two guys that are still on my list that if you're talking about upgrading the line and having a top 15, top 18 line in the NFL – then that absolutely does that. And you still go to the draft, still open-minded. You still can go do whatever you want to do first round, even if it is too well. And just know that the second round will present some talents like Cosme. They'll present some guys like Wyatt Davis. They're, they're going to be guys that starting caliber guard uh, available, even if the Bengals didn't do what I think they should do and go get another guard. So when I say I want Jamar Chase and stuff like that, it's because my plan says that, they need to go get another guard right now this all season to me to le to legitimize what I'm saying. And that's just give them firepower. You can spend all this money yeah. you want on the highest level tunies of the world. But like I said, you're one injury away from being the square one. I felt like yeah. the list that I compiled was guys like Hendrickson, who he did sign. It was guys like Mike Hilton, who I feel like is an upgrade in the slot. There's different guys that are on the list that, you know, the Bengals did sign and they listened to me, but yeah. If they That's don't listen to me and don't get Alden Smith or, you know, something like that to make the Hendrickson stuff make sense, then then I'm probably with you. Like, it, that's a downgrade and there's no way so, to hide it. So let me just get this straight. You're basically the voluntary GM for the Bengals. Absolutely. OK. All right. Well, look, Zim, it's been a pleasure. I feel very pumped up about the team. John is so happy to, to talk to someone. Who who is is more reasonable and rational about he's the Bengals? So second, he's so sick of you. He is. He is. He I think know the awesome. dynamic, and he knows. Yeah, there's no chemistry between us. That the love, it's just yeah. It's, and I think it's <laughs> it's the I'm offensive just for line. To come back. I'm honestly just waiting for him to come back. <laughs> the offensive line has has killed our relationship. Honestly, Zim. Really. <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's yeah, giving Daddy O a cold too. I mean, we better yeah. watch out for that. Yeah, you be safe out here, Daddy O. You put hand sanitizer on and stuff before you touch the mic. <laughs> I think I inhaled too much hand sanitizer actually because it was on sale. And then the 99 cent store had a big sale. Yeah, but okay. I heard That's it. I heard it tastes good. You should, you know, just lick a little bit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> some of the greatest leaders of our Jeez. country have promoted, yeah, uh, inhaling it or, or, or ingesting it. So look, that is all we have for this show. For these in who they. That is his last name. I don't usually say Hude because I'm, I'm still waiting for the proper moment to just say that. Yeah, I'm still waiting. And for John Sheeran, I'm Daddy McDook. Don't forget to leave a five-star review and subscribe. You'll see you next time. So long, sweetie. Bye. Sweetie.